Hi everyone, today's huge guest in every sense of the word is Cameron Green. Greenie is one of Australia's most talented cricketers. It's one thing to have that talent, it's another thing to put that talent to work. Greenie's certainly done that. He had an awesome Sheffield Shield season last year and he started this year fantastically to the point where the National Selection Panel had no other choice but to pick him. He's a great kid, lovely temperament on and off the field. He works his butt off to get better and you know what? I actually think he's getting bigger. Enjoy the chat. Greeny, thanks for joining us today. It's a little bit different. Uh, not face to face as I'd like to be, but there's a bit of a height disparity, so might, this might even it up. It's obviously been a whirlwind uh, couple of weeks, months for you, but today we're gonna take it back a little bit. Tell us about your first cricket club. Where did it all start for you? Yeah, thanks for having me, Bales. Um, Started just like most kids in the backyard with dad um, and then play a couple of games down to the park with local mates, you get dragged down after school and then my first real cricket club was Wembley Districts um, back in Perth, just around the corner from my home. You know, you're obviously an absolute giant and I think you're still growing. Is Where do you get your height from? Is that from dad's side, mum's side? No, nah, I think it definitely skipped the generation. I think most people that see my parents go, Jesus, like what's happened there? But cousins on both sides are pretty massive as well, 6'6 six, six or 6'5. Six, so, yeah, dad being less than six foot and mum being five and a half, if she's lucky. Um, yeah, it's definitely not from those two. And has that been the case all the way through when you were playing your junior stuff? Were you, were you a bit of a man child? Were you towering over the other under 10s and under 12 kids? No, not really. Um, probably in year 11 and 12, um, I really started to grow. Like in footy, I uh, just played through the guts, never really played up as a big centre forward or centre like centre half back. But yeah, probably in year 11 and 12 I started to grow. Uh, and obviously applying your trade as an all-rounder, was that always the way you went about your cricket, just batting and bowling as much as you could? Did you have a preference? Like most kids, when you're young, you just want to do as much as you can all the time. You hate just sitting in the field, you really want to be bowling yourself. So yeah, just want to do as much as I could and yeah, that's probably why I do both still. And from your junior clubs, was there any piece of advice or a coach who had a, you know, a really strong influence on you and whose words when you're out scratching middle in test cricket are still ringing in your ears? No, not really. I didn't have too many coaches when I was younger. I just had dad as a mantelpiece really to go back to. If you're going to put it on a t-shirt, what's the best piece of advice that your dad's ever given you cricket-wise? Uh, playing the V until you're on 33. All his advice, does it all rhyme? Yeah, most of them do, yeah. Uh, it tries to be funny like that. What was your pathway from your junior stuff? How did you transition through those ranks? My dad always used to try and push me to train in the men's training session. So I used to try and go down there when I was 14, face blokes that I still play with now that would say they bowl backwards. But I used to face them being like, oh my God, like how could I ever face this? This is so quick. <laughs> um, and obviously the more you play, the more you face and the more you get used to it. But yeah, played for Subiaco Florit when I was 10, so starting under 13s. Um, played seniors when I was 15, probably in the fourth grade. Played a, yeah, a handful of fourth grade games, played a handful of third grade games, uh, played a couple of second grade games, and then into the first grade when I was 16. What age were you when a few of these guys, you'd obviously finish your bat at training and then pick up the ball to start doing your bat, and any of the batters start to say, uh, no, I'm, I've had enough. If Greeny's about to start cranking up, I'm, uh, I'm gonna jump out here. Well, yeah, I was a pretty reckless or immature 14 year old. So I used to run in when the when the light had gone down and ball bounces to these old blokes. <laughs> um, it's only when you start to get older and that you realise that's probably not the go. Probably look back and feel a bit sorry for those blokes. I'd say nearly 80% of the guys that have played in under 10s are still playing grey cricket now, which is pretty incredible. Um, so yeah, just absolutely love going back. Yeah, you just have so much fun out there. That's awesome, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure to see you playing in Australian colours and how quickly you've come on. It still blows my mind how calm and composed you are on the field, but then off the field, how young you tend to be. For instance, rocking up to the Australia A game earlier in the summer and then realising you didn't have your cricket bag with you. Stuff like that, I absolutely love. It's been a pleasure to see you go about your business. And I hope you keep uh, enjoying yourself and, uh, and playing really well. Thanks, Heath, Fales. Thanks for having me.